Page. Johan von Holstein! To, to talk about our vision and the future, now a word from the man whose achievements list long. A Harvard graduate and one of Sweden's most successful entrepreneurs ever. He has years and years of experience and have been among the world leaders of building internet-related companies all over the world. He was named Technology Pioneer by the World Economic Forum. He's rung the Wall Street bell. He's led companies with thousands of staff. Welcome, Johan Stahl von Holstein. Wow, thank you so much. I think it's amazing to be here. And I will tell you a story about why I think it's amazing and why, and why I'm here. But I'm gonna, so I have to start with a, telling you about the history, the background and then I'll tell you a bit about the presence, and then I'm gonna tell you a bit about the future. I come from a very, I come from a farm in the middle of nowhere, outside a very small, unimportant village, outside a small town, which nobody's ever heard of. And I was very dyslexic, so I don't even really write very well. I was hyper energetic, which is the reason I still walk back and forth on the scene while I speak. And I was actually very lousy at school. And when I finished my, uh, my ninth grade, I, was, I, was, I started selling when I was six. My, my grandfather was a fisherman, so the first thing I sold was fish. And then I went to a soccer fan, so I sold sweets on the soccer games when I was 12, and I sold newspapers. And at 14, I started working in a cheese factory. So I was a real farmer's boy, and at the age of 15, 16, when I finished my um, gymna uh, gymnasium, the, pre the, um, the school principal said, well, he doesn't need to continue school. He can take his full-on job at the factory. And my mother, she refused to accept that. She said, my son is talented. He's smart. He's going to study. And she forced me to study languages. And since I can't read and write, I can think, well, that was my, not so smart. But I do speak Spanish, French, German, English, and Swedish now. So I'm kind of happy that she did. But I was still very bad at school, so I traveled around the world for years and just hitchhiked around working as a waiter, working as a rep, as a ski teacher, and doing things I really liked to do. Until I had a really severe car accident, and I spent three months in hospital. And coming out of there, I realized that, well, I probably needed to get some kind of education. So I went into university, which was very difficult for somebody who's got the difficulties of reading and writing as I did. So what did I have to do? I had to work harder than everybody else. And I struggled getting out of there. And then I taught myself how to think in pictures instead of words and letters. And which made me eventually actually finish off my degrees with very good degrees. But not because I was talented, but because I worked harder. And once I finished, I got a job for one of the most amazing entrepreneurs we has ever had. He's not so famous outside Sweden as he is within Sweden, but he is fundamental to where Sweden is today because he broke down what Sweden's history and past was. Not believing in oneself, believing in the community, believing in that society would take care of you. He challenged that and said, you can do it yourself. And I managed to get a job for him. I actually met him in Barcelona, which we left yesterday. And I had studied for four years. I was indebted up over my ears with student loans. And the first job, I come into a suit like this and he says, no, 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 no. You have to have jeans and a t-shirt and the t-shirt should be dirty. You need to look cheap. And I said, why? I'm an MBA. I've studied at Harvard. I've worked so hard for this. And he said, no, everybody who starts working for me has to start with carrying a beer. And if you're good at carrying a beer, you can start off as president for any company you want. And, you know, I figured this is so unfair. I was ambitious. I was hardworking. I had worked so hard to get where I was. And I had a friend who I was studying with who was five, six years younger than me because I was old when I started studying. And he was actually quite bad at school. But he knew, his father knew the, the guy that I was working for. And he got a job in the main office with a nice suit. And I had to start at the very bottom. And I figured this is not fair. And do you know what? Life's not fair. And we should be very, very happy that life's not fair. Because if it was fair, we would probably have been bored because there's 70 billion people in the history of mankind. So we would have been bored maybe thousands or hundreds of years ago when people died in toothache at the age of 13. And where we, 
we've, we've all been born to the end of the 1900s. Doesn't matter where we're born. We've been born in the best area of all times. Just this is winning on the lottery. Actually, the fact that we exist is winning on a lottery considering the amount of sperms and ejaculation. We are all winners from day one, regardless of where we're born, what color we have, what intelligence we have. We exist and we have the ability to do something with our lives. So I sat down and I said, life's not fair. Like Bill Gates said, love's not fair, get used to it. And I figured, how am I gonna win? How am I gonna win from this beer carrying job that I had was creating a ch ch chain of shops for TV shops products, shit products that didn't work. And I figured I'm gonna work two hours harder than everybody else. Because if I work two hours harder, nobody's two hours smarter than me a day. So I went in first with everybody in the office in the morning. And at the end of the evening, when the last guy went home, I put on my clock and I stayed for another two hours. And after a couple of months, I finished the project one month earlier than he had anticipated. And I then started working on a business plan for a TV channel. He came back from a trip, I gave him the business plan, he made me marketing director for the TV channel. The TV channel had, nobody knew of the TV channel, they didn't really know, didn't have an audience, so I designed the marketing strategy for the channel and took it from six, seven percent penetrations to over 90% in six months. So he calls me up and says, you're doing a fantastic job and I'm not gonna make you president for your first time. It's nine months out of the university, I was CEO for my first company and I went, yeah! And he said, what am I going to do? He said, teletext. You know teletext? Probably the most boring medium ever invented by man. And I tried to get out of it. So I said, well, John, you know, John, well, his name was John Steinbeck. And I said, John, you know, I'm a technical idiot. My father's told me so since I was 12 years old and took apart a bicycle and never got it together again. And John says one of the most important things anybody's ever said to me in my entire life. He says, John, any idiot can learn anything in three months. That was revolutionizing to me. Because suddenly I understood that the difference between a super smart MBA from MIT and somebody who's a farmer's boy who's dyslexic and a cheese turner is about this big. It is absolutely nothing. And I realized that this was so magnificent to me that I realized that suddenly everybody can do anything they want if they just put their mind into it. If they just put the three months and decide that they're gonna be able to be successful. So I took the job as CEO. And in six months, I built the largest teletext production company in the world with offices in eight, nine countries. He calls me up <coughs> and he says, this is amazing, you're fantastic. You're now executive vice president for Bank I own in Luxembourg. So I go into the bank and I was there for two years living together with him and I took my salary from $2,000 a month when I started, which is still fairly good, but for an MBA with a lot of student loans, it wasn't that good. Five years later, I had um, $35,000 a month. I had a convertible sports car. I lived together with John Steinbeck in his house and thank you very much, sir. And I thought I was ridiculously wealthy and successful. And one night we were standing in our underpants drinking whiskey after having been out partying. And I, I say to him, how much money do you need to be rich? Because I felt very, very rich. I had about a million dollars already in unlisted stock in his companies. And he says, wow, Johan, you probably need 50 million. 50 million dollars, I said. What on earth would you want $50 million for? And he said, well, you know, you want a farm, you want an apartment in New York, an apartment in Stockholm, and a summer house in Santa Fe, and something in the Alps. You need a boat and staff, and a boat, sports car arts on the walls, jewelry on your wife and your kids in the right school that goes fast.
Stock Exchange in New York, and I actually opened live in CNN, the New York Stock Exchange. I started the first sharing economy company in the world called Let's Buy It.com, which was about the first company that tried to gather a crowd and make value out of it by saying, if we all want to buy a Volvo car, we can get a much better price than if we go one by one. And that was in 1998. And by the year 2000, I had built companies um, value. If you work hard and you put your money, in your, 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 your energy into it, your passion into it, you're, you commit to something you want to do, nothing is impossible. So I was, during this time, one of the very first visionaries of the internet. I loved the internet because I saw that it would build systems that would actually break down um, monopolies. It would break down unnecessary middlemen. It would put the power into the hands. I said, that's funny, coming from the most evil company in the history of mankind. And when Facebook came along, I said, now Google has somebody that's even more evil than them. And I said that Facebook is going to become the most valuable company in the world. Why? Because they're stealing all the knowledge and experience and values that we have as individuals. They're stealing the most important thing, our networks. And they're building their profits and they're
what do you do then? You never give up. So, um, I've been working on another number of things, and I've known Jonas for 10 or 15 years. And Jonas has presented me to different network things, and I love the idea of networking, and about network marketing. But I've never really felt that the ideas were good enough or quite there. Until he phones me up in April, May, and says, Jonas, this time, this time we're doing everything right. We have 15, 20 years of experience with people on the platform. I believe that you know a company that can give people the ability to find trading uh, opportunity to sell things and make money on the side that is of immense importance. My mentor Jan Steenbeck he told me that there is nothing as valuable as a good salesperson. You can have a lousy shit company with shit products and great salespeople and you can fly in. You can have fantastic products and a great company and lousy salespeople and you can go Good salesperson is And crowd one, and they all have more than five um, five hundred people in the network. It means we reach five billion people. That's almost everybody in the world that's on social media or networks. It means a network. It means not only that we will change the lives of the people selling in crowd one, but we will change the world through the way that entrepreneurs with good products does not have to go to the banks, to the venture capitalists, to whoever else we like. Thank you. 
It's not just about me and my down to line it. It's about actually making something. We need to get the critical mass. We need to get enough people into this industry to really go out there and make an impact. And we will, we will be devastating to VC companies, to the banking system. We are putting digital money and cash into the hands of people who are not even bankable in some countries. So, Some ass. Thank you all.